you can fit so many LaCroix in this bad boy right here. Hey YouTube fam, Robert with Coastal GX here. This time around, I want to talk about this thing right here. I want to talk about my Lexus GX 460 Sandy, okay? Uh, a lot of people are always asking me questions. They used to annoy me at first, but uh, I've kind of like grown accustomed to it. Question one, is it a four x four? Is it a V6? Is it front wheel drive? yeah no guys it's it, it's capable all right uh, I, I've been down to the East Cut many many times but it's okay it's okay I'm not gonna get mad anymore you know it's not annoying anymore I understand um, they're not very common and whenever you do see these vehicles on the road you tend to see um, let's be honest soccer moms businessmen uh, that type of people, uh, those type of people uh, driving these things around town, they never get dirty, they never go off-roading. Uh, but I'm here to dispel some of the myths or misconceptions about this uh, vehicle here. Uh, in the U.S. market, we have the GX470. It went from 2002 to 2009, and then from 2010 until present day, we have the GX460. All of the GX models have V8s. Uh, this one in particular, this is Sandy, is a 2012 model. And um, it does have a V8. They all have all wheel drive with center locking differentials. It shares a lot of traits with uh, the latest generation uh, Forerunner, by the way. As a matter of fact, the WeatherTech um, mats that it has inside are from a Toyota Forerunner and they fit like they were made for it. I mean, just, I mean, just a, a even swap. Recently, we went to the East Cut, and uh, I was lucky enough to be joined by two other people. Uh, one of them with a later model uh, GX 460, and another uh, gentleman, uh, Mike. He came down uh, from Elotes, uh, Texas, and uh, he brought his GX 470. So, yeah, that's the the, the first generation. So anyway. I prepared this little video. I just want to do a little intro and uh, enjoy. Okay guys, so apparently here I am not the only guy with a GX. We have Mike. Mike, where, do you, where are you joining us from? Uh, Helotus, Helotus, Texas. Helotus, Texas. And we have Mark Clark. That's correct, I'm from Edinburgh, Texas. So these two gentlemen and this guy right here, the only ones out here with uh, the Lexus GXs. Think he's up, anyone? Boom, right here. <laughs> so we had to represent, I am very happy that we have, I guess you would say the three generations or three different models. You have uh, with uh, starting with a GX470 from Mike. He's got it nice and built. Tell us a little bit about when you got this, why you got it, and what have you done to it, really quick. Yeah, well, actually, I was looking for Andy. Uh, I was going to first start looking for, like a lot of people. Aren't we all? And so, I was just having a hard time finding one that was complete and was rust-free and so forth, even in South Texas. <clears throat> so I started looking around, and I, I follow an Australian guy who has a has a Prado. So as soon as I started looking, I'm like, well, really, this is a Land Cruiser 120. And at the time, I had a Duramax. I had a big, huge dually. So um, got this platform. I got it at 109,000 miles for a really reasonable price. It probably had never been in four low, not one time. So I got it about three years ago. And so started mildly like everyone else in little bigger tires and then I did wheels and then went to 35s before that was a real big thing. Did the body mount chop, went with rad flows all the way around from SSO, 
and then did the SSO rack and the, the sliders. Um, and then last year, my wife and I went to, did basically the Southwest. We did West Texas, we did New Mexico and Arizona. And so that 15 day circle we did, um, I built a platform in the back and put some shelves in there and then also put my fridge in there and put 100 watts of solar on the roof so we could actually run it. Um, between that and everything else, everything else inside is pretty much stock except for the stereo. I did a Tesla type dash when redid everything inside stereo wise. It took about two weeks to get all that done. But it's been really good. And since since we did the roof rack, we, we put on the Smitty Built XL, which is a huge tent. I almost wish I would have bought the smaller one because the big one's for four people. And then just recently I put this awning on, which is eight feet by eight feet out. So it's plenty of shade. So in the future upcoming, uh, I already have a descent all aluminum front bumper put on it in the garage. Um, hopefully put a winch in that. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna powder cone it or paint it body color yet, but yeah, it's been a great platform. I've been completely impressed um, with all the gear on it. Honestly, 12 miles to gallon, 14 on a good day. You take the 10 off and you're back up to 15, 16. So in Texas, gas isn't bad, so it's reasonable. So. You, do you plan, let me ask you, do you plan on on keeping this for a while? Is, are you, oh, yeah. are not, you that satisfied yeah, with it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm not gonna go anywhere else. So I'll keep this until it either falls apart or uh, gets totaled. So yeah, this is it. And so uh, fortunately I've got a supportive wife. And so she's like, I can't wait till we get the bumper on the rear and put the tire on and everything else. So that's fortunate. And so the kids like it and it can fit us all because I can still put a six seat in the back. So I can do one side of my back row so there's plenty of seating it gets good enough mileage it's only got 152,000 miles on it so honestly it's, it's got yeah it's just broke in it's got 200 more to go easily there's a guy i'm buds with in santone that he's got 400,000 on his john renneman so um it's a definitely a valuable platform it's only we're only going to see more of them as the price comes down right now they're still hitting above 10 grand even a really cheap one so as soon as that gets sub 10 grand this platform's gonna blow up. It'll be like the Forerunners were when they were really expensive and the FJs are gonna be, right? So yeah, it's a, it's definitely legit. Well, could use a bigger d rear end and a different a locker, but other than that, it's a good platform. Any downfalls? Have you seen anything that you would say, you know what, I wish... The rear end. The rear. So the rear end, if it was the same one that came in the Forerunners or the trucks, it would be much better. Don't get me wrong, you have to be abusing it pretty hard. You know, shocking it is usually what blows them to my knowledge. So if you if you baby it around and you don't do a whole lot, I mean, let's face it, there's a reason why we talk about Pinkies Up and Starbucks, because 99% of the time, or at least 90% of the time, you're driving to work or you're going here or going there. But when you want to escape work and come to SPI or you want to go to the Piney Woods of Texas or up to Big Bend, you know, something like this is definitely valuable. It's definitely valuable. And when you can live out of it, I've got a 13 gallon water tank, an 84 quart fridge, two batteries. You know, we can live out of this with 100 watts of solar. It can recharge anything I need. Um, the only thing I need is, uh, you know, a ham radio license and I've got comms. So everything else is perfect. So this is not the first time that you come to these cut or, or, or it's the first time I've been to this cut. Yeah. So from six, the six mile in, um, we usually go down a mile and stop and camp there. So yeah, this is the first time I forwarded in it and came across. So I was a little concerned because sometimes these have a tendency to hydrolock on the pasture sides where it pulls in the air. And so, yeah, I was a little nervous when water came over the hood. So, um, but I just didn't give it anything. I coasted over through it, you know, so it was, it was fine. Any future mods? Yeah, actually the next thing to go on absolutely is the front bumper. So as soon as I get that bumper on, I'll be much happier winch it and let it go. I've got plenty of power. There's a 250 amp alternator in it already because I've got like 18 watts, of, 1800 watts of stereo. Um, so I've already got two batteries up here and I've got two uh, 12 amp hour batteries in the back that power my fridge because it's completely isolated from the rest of the electrical system. Um, so powering the winch won't be any problem at all. So that's my next step. I, I literally picked this vehicle up three weeks ago four weeks ago, something like that. So this is the second time I've been out to East Cut, and so far, so good.
You were telling me that uh, part of the reason or the way you convinced your wife. Yes, yes. So part of the reason I did get this is what, what I, I want to downgrade pay, uh, payments, monthly payments a little bit. You know, no, nobody looks at a Lexus and think, hey, you know, I want to downgrade my car payment. But they're really affordable, much much more so than a used FJ, a used Forerunner, a used Tacoma. It's it's coming out on the market and underutilized. So that's why I went ahead and purchased this GX460 uh, because there's so much you can do with it. Now, in order to convince my wife, which is probably the hardest thing for most of us and, and most of you guys watching this uh, channel here, uh, I happened to find Robert Coastal GX on YouTube coming out here in his stock GX at that time and coming out fishing, doing a five day camping trip, pulling out Ford Raptors, uh, just showing the do's and, and don'ts of, of owning this vehicle. And I feel for me, it's been very informative. So it kind of gave me that inspiration to go forward. And uh, with talking to, to Robert here, also Mike, who I found on Instagram, you know, it just gave me a great inspiration of what my vehicle can go. So Robert's got about a year on me coming out here to the beach in his GX and, you know, Mike as well coming out here several times. You know, this is just the first trip. And I mean, there's gonna be many more to come. But if it wasn't so much for that YouTube channel and, and finding out what these guys have been doing with it, I honestly don't think I could have convinced my wife. And she's gonna watch this at home some point and she's gonna thank me. <laughs> so uh, I, I do wanna thank Robert for inviting me out. I wanna thank Mike for coming down all the way j just to show up for this event and uh, kind of give me that you know, in-person view of, of what we can do. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Uh, it really helps out the channel. By the way, we're kicking out a lot more content. There's a lot more content coming up. So thanks again.